coronavirus pandemic, how they're aiming to keep residents and themselves safe. Coverage you can count on. Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 11. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Greg Glover. And I'm Cindy Saxton. New tonight in the ongoing coronavirus outbreak, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp announced he is closing all public schools and colleges at least until the end of the month. This is effective Wednesday through March 31st. Also new tonight, the University of Tennessee has announced all classes will be online for the rest of the semester. And that includes UT Chattanooga. Commencement ceremonies will not be held, but students who are set to graduate will receive their degrees. In a statement, the university said more information will be released tomorrow about move out arrangements, financial aid and refunds. Updates can be found at utc.edu slash coronavirus. Hamilton County schools will stay closed until April 15th, excuse me, April 13th. Administrators say they'll continue with the virtual learning program to make sure students are still learning. The announcement made this afternoon comes after Governor Bill Lee requested schools around the state close their doors through the end of the month. Hamilton County does not plan to shift its calendar. Administrators say spring break begins April 3rd and continues through April 10th. Both Cleveland City and Bradley County schools will remain closed until March 31st. No activities will take place during that time. That includes sports, field trips and fine arts. The school breakfast and lunch programs offered by both districts will be given to the students. EPB announced they will suspend disconnection and late fees and that they're working on a plan to provide additional support to customers to help them avoid running up large bills. This is aimed at helping parents who are staying home with kids or who are working from home. If you find you're unable to pay your bill, call EPB's customer support line. A quick look at the latest number of cases. There are 52 in Tennessee. Only one of those is in Hamilton County. The number rose to 121 today in Georgia, with the largest number of those in the metro Atlanta area. And 28 cases are reported in Alabama. Health officials say the number of people quarantined in Hamilton County went from 3 to 29 over the weekend. In response, emergency management officials opened an emergency operations center off Amnicola Highway to fight COVID-19. Agencies representing EMS, fire, police and education and hospitals too will coordinate all community efforts. Our Jake Chapman joins us to tell us what this entails for first responders. Jake. Well, Greg, emergency management leaders say they'll limit how many personnel will respond to non-emergency calls. With the number of confirmed cases rising in the state and more residents under quarantine, first responders want to do everything they can to prevent any more cases from happening. To limit, to limit our exposures so we can limit the exposure that we can also our families. Deputy Director John Miller says they'll use a new procedure to evaluate patients at a scene. As soon as we walk in the door, we're going to start the assessment you know, at that safe social distancing away. So we'll be speaking to them from across the room just to verify those symptoms are present. They will also be equipped with extra tools in case a patient shows signs of COVID-19. Once we, once we verify those symptoms are present, we're going to place a mask on the patient, a surgical mask, to limit the exposure to anybody around or the equipment in the ambulance. The Hamilton County Sheriff's Office is also making changes. Public Information Officer Matt Lee says they will do non-priority reports over the phone until April 1st. Both the Sheriff's Office and paramedics will continue to respond normally when it comes to critical calls. Help is still close by, help is still coming. This, we are really only eliminating some of the less the less acute calls. And the health department is making changes. Administrator Becky Barnes says they're recruiting former employees out of retirement to help their current 150 person staff, saying experience will come in handy as they continue to fight this health pandemic. That we need everyone engaged in our community working toward the single purpose of stopping the spread of COVID-19 and supporting our community when these disruptions happen. Miller says if the call is a response to someone who may have the virus, the responders will be informed firsthand to make sure they're ready before heading out the door. In the studio, Jake Chapman, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Jake. Increasingly extreme measures are being implemented across the country trying to slow the spread of COVID-19. 
and to keep it from overburdening the health care system. President Trump said today the worst of the coronavirus probably won't be over until July or August. NBC's Sarah Dolliff has the story on what's being seen across the country. From coast to coast, the week off to a surreal start. It's like a nightmare that doesn't end. As COVID-19 cases climb at an alarming rate, roughly a dozen states now offering drive-through testing. One in one side of the nose and one in the other side, and then we put it inside the tube and we close it off and we send it with their individual information. The White House repeating a promise it made last week to make more tests available in a matter of days, as the president urged the toughest guidelines yet including school closures in affected areas, avoiding discretionary travel, avoiding groups of 10 or more, and working from home when possible. Each and every one of us has a critical role to play in stopping the spread and transmission of the virus. Millions of Americans adjusting to dramatically different routines. Seven million people in the San Francisco Bay Area told to go home and stay home for three weeks. Restaurants and stores shuttered, grocery store shelves bare. It's just chaos. There's a huge line to get toilet paper. But the message from grocers, America is not running out of food. We're still going to be able to feed people. Schools offering online learning and take-home lunches for those who rely on free or reduced food. I gave enough for the whole week for five days. A new uncertain normal amid a national emergency. Sarah Dolliff, NBC News. Some breaking news this evening out of Saudi Daisy. We're told a body was found in a wooded area this afternoon. The Hamilton County Sheriff's Office says this was near the intersection of Sequoia Road and West Ridge Trail Road. The medical examiner's office is working to determine the identity cause and manner of death of that person. No other details are available just yet. We're told the investigation is ongoing. Yeah, let's turn to a look at the forecast. Uh, rain picked back up again tonight. And well, you can see it's a cloudy sky over downtown Chattanooga right now. How about it, Paul Bears? All right, showers spreading across the area. No surprise there. We told you at six that rain was coming in. And we're going to get a break in it in probably an hour or so. And then we may see some more showers coming up in the morning. Heaviest rain right now is over northeast Alabama and over north Georgia, too. There are some showers that are moderate uh, moving out of Bradley into Polk County and then in Cherokee County, North Carolina. Uh, hasn't gotten that much rain out there, but you're going to get some more coming up in the next hour or so. And uh, this whole little line is pushing on by. Future scan It's a computer model that goes out about an hour, and it shows the heaviest rain again over Dalton, Chatsworth, Eton, Blue Ridge, LJ over the next hour or so a little after midnight, and then a few sprinkles afterwards, too. Here's a look at the wider radar. There's more showers and storms out to the west. I mean, there's a slight chance we could see a thunderstorm tomorrow, but mainly just going to be rain as this whole area comes in, and there's going to be more building up as the little wave in the upper atmosphere moves on by. A rapid refresh model shows the heaviest rain over with at about 3 o'clock in the morning, and then coming up to around 6, 7 in the morning, again, some patches of rain, so the morning rush hour could see some more rain, and into the uh, early afternoon, again, some showers moving by, then it starts to break apart by about 4 o'clock. So we're thinking another half inch of rain is more than likely across the Tennessee Valley, more than you've gotten already. So don't be surprised if you see, you know, some places have already seen three or four tenths, anywhere between a half inch to an inch of rain total in many, many spots. Seven day forecast is coming up very soon. All right, Paul, thank you. After the break here at 11, how local schools are making sure students who rely on the schools for meals are still being fed while classes are out.
As schools close to prevent the spread of COVID-19, students could be left without easy access to breakfast and lunch. In Catoosa County, the school system is trying to make sure students have meals. Two days worth of breakfast and lunch is being handed out at each of the district's three high schools. Meals will be handed out again on Wednesday and following Monday to get the students to spring break. They just have to show up to receive the bags there. Superintendent Dina Reese says closing schools made for a challenge, but it was the right choice. But we also have to put the safety of our children and our community first. And so the decision to close school came as an easy one at the end of the week last week. Tusa County schools are also offering meal delivery for students who can't make it by. Call 706-965-0266 and give them your information. Hamilton County is doing the same. Find those locations on our website and in the WRCB app. Coming up on Eyewitness News in 11, an update on a story surely you've heard by now. A local man was caught trying to resell thousands of items he had bought, taking advantage of panic surrounding the coronavirus. We'll tell you the latest and where all those hand sanitizers are going. Coverage you can count on. Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 11. A local story that has people talking all over the country. A Hickson man purchased 18,000 bottles of hand sanitizer to sell for top dollar online. Now it's all being donated. Two thirds of the sanitizer went to Calvary Chapel here in Chattanooga. The Tennessee Attorney General is holding on to the other third, said to give back to the community in Kentucky, where Matt and Noah Colvin cleared out the shelves. They were keeping it in a storage locker. The Attorney General's office says both brothers are cooperating with the investigation. Although they donated the stockpile, it doesn't mean they're off the hook, according to the AG. If evidence establishes the two engaged in price gouging, the AG says they will face appropriate penalties. Calvary Chapel chose not to go on camera, but instead provided a statement. It reads in part, quote, we are inventorying it and have been in constant contact with Sheriff Jim Hammond and local authorities to get this into the hands of first responders, nursing homes, and anywhere else it is most needed. Well, a site we have seen for about a week now, folks rushing to the grocery stores, stocking up on supplies in a panic. And we sat down with Shia Rowe, the arts and health coordinator at CHI Memorial. She says change can be difficult for everybody, but it's important to express your feelings to keep this from becoming a traumatic experience. She admits she took part in stocking up on supplies. 
I noticed it in myself too. I went to the grocery store on Friday with my kids and, and thought, oh, I'm going to buy this or that, things that I don't normally buy. I'm like, why am I doing that? And so just being able to, um, to notice what's going on internally and feeling those tensions rise and then doing something intentional to slow that down. If you're feeling overwhelmed, Rose says the arts are a great way to help you relax. She suggests people try to make a playlist with some of your favorite songs or take time to journal in a notebook. Many people still have questions about coronavirus testing. The Chattanooga Hamilton County Medical Society says the tests are not available upon request, but healthcare facilities can do the nose or throat swab. Health Department administrators said in a press conference last week the actual testing is done somewhere else. If you are exhibiting symptoms, call your local provider or urgent care before going. At least at this point, I don't believe any local hospitals are doing testing. It's, it's big private laboratories like LabCorp. Mm -hmm. LabCorp says they expect to do 10,000 tests every day by the end of this week. As for local drive through testing proposed by the president last week, CVS says they are working on setting up drive through testing locations based on need and geographic location. The first of those will be in Shelbyville, Tennessee. And an important first step in finding a safe and effective vaccine for COVID-19. A participant in a coronavirus vaccine trial in the U.S. was administered the first dose today. The National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases is funding the trial. The study aims to enroll a total of 45 healthy adults over a six-week time frame. Experts say proving the vaccine is effective will require follow-up studies involving many more participants. The trial is run out of a research institute in Seattle. We partnered with the Hamilton County Health Department today to answer questions you may have about the coronavirus pandemic. More than 500 people used the number that you see there on your screen today. Some of the main questions asked were about recognizing symptoms and how to avoid getting sick altogether. They've also stressed social distancing. And that means staying at least six feet away from others. Representatives were directing callers to the Centers for Disease Control if callers experience symptoms. Here's what you will get if you call now. We will direct you to the Tennessee Department of Health hotline number, and they are open till 11 o'clock Central or 11 o'clock Eastern Time every evening, Monday through Sunday. The health department says the message is simple. Stay home unless it's necessary to get out. You can find more details about the hotline and ways to stay safe. Use the WRCB app and click on the coronavirus tab. So it'll be back up and running tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. Now we want to check in with Paul Barris. He's here with us live in person. Speaking of up and running again, more rain. Take yeah. it away, Paul. <laughs> I wish you could wash out the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes because we got so much of it. All right, the heaviest rain right now is over North Georgia, pushing into the Blue Ridge Mountains of Georgia and North Carolina. I think Chattanooga's seen the heaviest rain so far, uh, but uh, you know, just about from uh, Chickamauga all the way to about Dalton, Varnell, Eton, and up towards Blue Ridge, and going out through Trenton too, Dade County's getting hit pretty hard. Uh, my Skywatch calling with four tents, I bet he's got about six or seven tents by now. And uh, we're looking at, again, over the next hour or so, the heaviest rain from Dalton into the Blue Ridge area and then some just light rain showers moving over Hamilton County and much of Tennessee. Now, there are more showers out to the west, even a few thunderstorms, so we can't rule out the chance for rain later on tonight and through tomorrow, too. A satellite photo shows where all this is coming from. The moisture is coming out of the Gulf of Mexico, and the jet stream is pumping the stuff up. So we're going to see more rain coming in. When you have a nice northwesterly flow, you don't get this type of uh, rain. But uh, this is not a northwesterly flow. It's a southwest flow. 53 in Dalton, also in the city, and mid-50s from Cleveland, Athens to Dayton, 53 in Murphy. Temperature's pretty much the same with the cloud cover. And southerly winds at about 6. High today, 57, 47, the overnight low. So far at the airport, only about a tenth of an inch of rain has fallen. But probably before it's over with, you're going to see uh, quite a bit, uh, probably at least a half inch. Uh, we're looking at highs today and a few rainfall reports. About a tenth in Scottsboro, Fort Payne, Lafayette. South of the city, not so much yet, at least from the sky watchers. But we had four tenths Signal Mountain, about three tenths in Red Bank, Ottawa and Cleveland, about two tenths, four tenths in Trenton so far, and Ringgold only about a tenth, but that's about an hour and a half old. 
and I'm sure there's more down there already. Dayton about four tenths, three tenths in Dunlap, and four tenths in Jasper, while Altamont had a couple tenths, and about two tenths out near Delano. Some of the most rain is out in Turtletown. Dave Peterman told me, I got soaked for you. I had to go out and check it, and he had five tenths. Murphy's only had about tenths of a tenth of an inch. All right, looking at Vipercast, even tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock, we'll see some showers. It's around 10 o'clock, still a chance for some showers. Then it just breaks apart, may see a sprinkle into the afternoon. It looks like we may even get a little bit of clearing tomorrow night. Then coming up in the Wednesday morning, more clouds roll in, some fog too, and a few sprinkles out to the east of us. And coming up into Wednesday afternoon, another round of showers will start developing. So we just can't get out of this, and even into the evening hours. By Thursday, I think, will probably be the driest day around here. So all in all, I think we're going to probably see a good half inch to an inch of rain across much of the area uh, before uh, probably uh, the rain sort of tapers off a little bit on Thursday. Tonight, 53, and the shower's already in. 65 tomorrow. Best chance for rain will be in the morning and early afternoon. Then tomorrow night, 53, and a slight chance for a shower. And here's the radar again showing all that rain off to the north, uh, over north Georgia. And then we're looking at about 73 on Wednesday. That'll be nice with a 40% chance. Coming up into Thursday, about 77, first day of spring, and that could be one of the better days. 75, and a real good chance for showers and storms Friday. Saturday, maybe a few showers left over. Should be ending, though. Sunday looks dry, and Monday, another round of rain. <laughs> it's just, it's, a, it's an Sunday. amazing thing. We're all going to be experts in rainy days That's by right. the time March That's is right. over. Sloshing oh. around. Yeah. Thank you. Okay.